City Council meeting for May 15th, 2017. I'll call on, um, let's see, Mr. McGough, you have the floor this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. I'd ask at this time that everyone in attendance would join the council in a moment of silent reflection. And now would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Kristen Rush. Mayor Williams. Mayor Pro Tem Pfeiffer? Here. Councilmember Allard? Here. Councilmember Ford? Here. Councilmember Jones? Here. Councilmember Marriott? Here. Councilmember McGough? Here. Here, can I get a motion to excuse Mayor Williams? Mr. Jones? Uh, I'd move to excuse Mayor Williams for tonight's business meeting. Motions to excuse Mayor Williams? That passes six to zero, excusing Mayor Williams. He's in Peru. Lucky him. All right, next I have up is the approval of the minutes for May 1st, 2017 City Council meeting. Do we have any changes, corrections, deletions? Seeing none, those will stand approved. Next up we have petitions, recognition, and communications. Uh, Nancy Ford. I'd like to invite all the uh, Northy Foundation Scholarship Award winners to the podium. The W. Michael Northey Foundation was created to award scholarships to those pursuing a higher education degree and to assist officers and their families in times of need. Northey was a police officer for the city of Arvada who was tragically killed after being struck by a car while making an arrest on August 11, 1979. Northey was very active with the youth of the community and the Northey Foundation was created in his honor. Scholarships are funded by two events organized by the Northey Foundation, the Drug Take Back every April and the Shred-a-thon every October and by generous donations from our community. This year, 16 outstanding students from Arvada are receiving scholarships totaling 25,500. At this time, we'd like to recognize these students and present them each with a certificate. Haley Hooser, congratulations. Nicole Coxman, there she is, congratulations. Aaron Looney, there you are, congratulations. Michaela Mar Marez, is that right? Close enough, I'm sorry. <laughs> Caitlin Madsen, there she is, congratulations. Gage Mecklenburg, congratulations. David Mitchell, there you are, David, congratulations. Maya, oh, there you are. Congratulations, O'Quinn. Trey Sayers, congratulations. Carrie Shaley, Congra oops, congratulations. Ethan, <laughs> nice. is that everybody? Congratulations.
On behalf of the City Council, we want to congratulate each of you for your hard work and, wish you, and we wish you all the very best on your college education as you continue. Arvada is very proud to have you all as representatives and um, there is a reception for you and the families in the atrium. Thank you, Ms. Ford, and it's a great program and I'm glad to see all these young folks uh, getting recognized. So we're gonna give it a minute so everyone can exit that needs to. Uh, State Senator Zinzinger, is she here? I didn't see her when I, oh gosh, there you are. Why don't you come on up here and share our next item? Great, well, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm State Senator Rachel Zinzinger, and it's good to be back. Yes. Um, if I could please have the family of Officer Jim Glassman to uh, the podium with me. It is my distinct honor to be able to present a tribute from the Senate of the Colorado Legislature. It says, convened in the first regular session of the 71st General Assembly, hereby extends heartiest congratulations and commendation to the family of Officer James Glassman. Officer Glassman provided nearly 40 years of public service to the Arvada community, including 20 years as a school resource officer at Pomona High School until his retirement in 2016. Officer Glassman, or OG, as he was fondly nicknamed by Pomona students, was known for his big-hearted generosity above and beyond duty. Officer Glassman's infectious, positive outlook was an inspiration to both students and faculty. OG will always be remembered as a mentor and a friend by those who interacted with him, especially during his tenure as a school resource officer. The legacy of Officer James Glassman is worthy of commendation and a deep felt thanks from the people of Colorado. On the request of Senator Rachel Zenzinger, State Capitol, Denver, Colorado, signed Kevin J. Grantham, President of the Senate. And I'll be presenting this to uh, Jim Glassman's family and his wife, Nancy. Also with us this evening was his mother, his brother, his uh, children. And thank you, uh, Senator Zinzinger. Uh, he was a fine man and will never be forgotten. He has touched this entire community. Those that have known him and even not known him has known he's touched, he has touched our community in all facets that you cannot even fathom. So I'm glad we're honoring him tonight. And thank you, State Senator uh, Zinzinger. Thank you. Next up, I think you have something else for us too. I do, I have a second tribute to present. If um, Roberta Ramirez would join me at the podium. Do or should I say Judge Ramirez? Well, I was gonna ask, do we need to rise? <laughs> <laughs> so I have another tribute here. The Senate of the Colorado Legislator, Legislature convened in the first regular session of the 71st General Assembly hereby extends heartiest congratulations and commendation to Roberto Ramirez. On the occasion of his appointment as District Court Judge for Colorado's 17th Judicial District, Judge Ramirez has already distinguished himself in service to his country and community, serving as the Senior Assistant Attorney for the City of Arvada and as a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Air Force Reserves. His scholarship and wisdom have been demonstrated through his work as an adjunct professor at the University of Denver School of Law, and additionally as the chief senior prosecutor for the Air Force Reserves. 
The honor of being sat as judge is both earned and exemplary. Judge Ramirez deserves the respect of all the people of Arvada and the state of Colorado, and we look forward to the impartiality, sagacity, and compassion that we know he will demonstrate as a jurist. On the request of Senator Rachel Zenzinger, given this day at the signed at the state capitol, Denver, Colorado, by Kevin J. Grantham, President of the Senate. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Senator Zinzinger. And Roberto, we're going to miss you. You know, I'm glad to see our fine employees grow, grow through our community and do great things for the greater community. So congratulations. All right, next up, Mr. Marriott, I think you're up. Thank you, Your Honor. May I have uh, Darcy Bolton Weiser and Paige Boland come on down to the uh, podium? <clears throat> Tonight, the City Council recognizes two members of our community who have served for many years on one of the citizens appointed boards and commissions. These individuals have contributed countless hours to the City of Arvada and have reached their maximum years of services on their board or commission. The Human Services Advisory Committee is saying goodbye to Darcy Bolton Weiser. Darcy's years of participation in Arvada's Home Services, or excuse me, Human Services Advisory Committee demonstrated strong dedication for assisting the disadvantaged within our community. Her experience and understanding of the nonprofit community has been a tremendous asset. As a grant writer and advisor to nonprofit agencies, she knows what can and should be expected from these organizations. Her legal expertise greatly informed decisions that justified allocations from a very limited pool of funds to help Arvada's neediest. Darcy's compassion and insight as an advocate, both personally and professionally, provided a sound reference point for the committee to feel co confidence needed in final recommendations. She always does her homework and is always prepared for thoughtful discussion with committee members. Her input and participation on the committee will be greatly missed. The Arvada Urban Renewal Authority is saying goodbye to Paige Bolin. Ms. Bolin has been an ORA commissioner for 10 years, two of which she served as ORA's chair. During her tenure, Paige was instrumental in the development of many of Arvada's exciting projects, including the Super Target Anchored Center on Kipling Street, Arvada Station Apartments, Old Town Square, Hilton Garden Inn, and many, many others. Prior to her 10 years on the ORA board, Paige served nine years on the Planning Commission. That's 19 years of dedicated service to the community. Thank you, Paige. And I have a couple of plaques for you guys, so if you'd stay there, I'd like to hand these to you. And uh, if you'd say a word or two, that'd be great. I'm Darcy Weiser, and I would just like to thank the City Council for this opportunity. I am an Arvada native. Uh, my family has been here for actually a couple of generations now, and it's been an, an absolute honor to work with the city and to serve on this committee. So thank you very much for tonight. And thank you for your service. We appreciate it very much. I'm Paige Bolin. I want to thank the City Council very much for the opportunity to serve the city. I'm not a native, but I've lived here for 28 years, 19 of that on some city board or commission because I believe that the only way you can make a difference is to serve your community. I would encourage every resident in the city to do the same thing. It's as rewarding uh, for me to, for what I get out of it as what I give in. So thank you very much for the opportunity and I look forward to finding something else to do for the city. Thank you, Paige, for all your service. So I'm next up, and I'd like to call, is it Kagan Mancuso? Why don't you, Kagan, you want to come on down to the podium and while we talk about you a little bit? Sure. Kagan Mancuso is an amazing student attending Lawrence Elementary. Ms. Stephen Vaughn, Kagan's uh, homeroom teacher, speaks very highly of him, and we're going to quote her. 
His academic ac accomplishments are nothing short of incredible. He qualified for a gifted and talented program with a score in the 99th percentile nationwide for verbal, nonverbal, and quantitative skills. He excels at every endeavor he pursues. He is also a natural leader among his peers. He is the kid that makes every other kid feel good about themselves. He speaks up for kids who have a hard time finding their own voice, which has uh, worked to stop clicks and bullying. He is a brilliant, fair, level-headed, and kind. Kigan is a role model and is very in his positivity, passion, and momentum are truly contagious. The city council wishes to congratulate Kigan Mancuso for all of his achievements at Lawrence Elementary. And I have a certificate of recognition signed by the city council and mayor uh, dated the 15th day of May 2017. So I'm going to bring this down to you and parents if you want to take a picture you're more than welcome to come down this way and congratulations. I just first of all want to say thank you to everyone for even thinking of doing this for me. I have to say I wasn't exactly expecting it, but <laughs> thank you. Um, I couldn't do this all without my mom and of course my past, for the past two years my teachers, um, Miss Vaughn, Stephanie Vaughn, and Anna Klein, as well as um, Mr. Eric Goodwine. Um, they have been so much of a help and I couldn't thank everyone else enough. And that is all that the script said. Oh, good. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't forget the plaque. <laughs> also, I just want to recognize, you know, the community's recognized you. Cindy Kreitzer brought him up to to me, and I was just fascinated with the success. And I think we need to. This world needs a little bit more positive to see our kids grow and contribute back to our community, and we're proud you're one of ours. So again, congratulations. All right, next up, we have Mr. McGough. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. It is my honor this evening to read a proclamation for the Public Works staff. And we have memory, many members of the Public Works staff here. I would like all of you to come to the podium This year, National Public Works Week, sponsored by the American Public Works Association, celebrates the vital role public works plays in connecting all of us together. As the cornerstone of civilization, my gosh, that's a, that's a significant thing. As the cornerstone of civilization, <laughs> public works provides, maintains, and improves the structures and services that assure a higher quality of life for our communities. Its streets, roads, bridges, and public transportation keep us linked together from coast to coast. And its clean water and sanitation services keep us healthy and allow our communities to grow and prosper. In recognition of these efforts at May 21 to 27, 2017, is recognized as National Public Works Week, I wish to read the following proclamation and I'll come down and present it to you. Whereas public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas such facilities and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees who are responsible for and must plan, design, build, operate, and maintain the transportation, water supply, water treatment systems, public buildings and other structures and facilities essential to serve our citizens. And whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends upon these facilities and services, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform, 
And whereas 2017 marks 58th annual National Public Works Week, now therefore be it proclaimed that the Mayor and the Arvada City Council hereby designate May 21 to 27, 2017 as National Public Works Week. This proclamation is dated today, the 15th day of May 2017. The proclamation is signed by Mayor Mark Williams and all members of Council. Thank you very much for all you do for our city. Say their name and what division they're with. And I think was Craig to come here? Because he would make an excellent public works employee. We need to stay on top of him. I'm Jamie Vesta. I'm in engineering. Ryan Norton, Geodata Services. Christopher Yaney, Streets Division. Don Wisniewski, uh, Facilities Maintenance. Chris Proper, Engineering. John Ferruzzi, Traffic Engineering. And who, and who are you? Pat Doherty, Public Works. There, oh, there you go. Thank you very much, and congratulations in, for this week, and thank you for all you do. Next up, we have public comment on issues not scheduled onto the agenda tonight. We allot lot three minutes. First up is Nancy Young. Ms. Young, if you don't mind coming up and sharing your full name and address. Good evening. I'm Nancy Young, 7706 Robinson Way here in Arvada. That's spelled Y-O-U-N-G, as in forever young. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. May is National Historic Preservation Month first proclaimed in 1973. All over this great nation, communities are celebrating their cultural, social, and historic heritage as embodied by buildings, transportation artifacts, like original highways and railways, and other original items that have been saved from destruction. You know, Arvada is unique in this nation we have one of the very, very few original commercial historic districts flanked by original residential districts. And thanks to the city of Arvada, all of these areas are now listed on the National Register. We have three such districts. Furthermore, the city of Arvada states in all of its major plans, like the comprehensive plan, that preservation is one that preservation of our historic character is a major objective. And so it seems very curious that the city has not formally recognized National Historic Preservation Month and the organizations that work to preserve the evolution of our rich history. In fact, I couldn't find anything to say that Arvada has ever recognized National Historic Preservation Month. So while other communities are celebrating their own heritage, Arvada is silent. We have no events, no preservation projects, no educational events, silence. So it makes a citizen wonder if the preservation objectives stated in the city's many plans are just empty words with no substance. And this concern would be supported by wholesale changes to or even demolition of original historic buildings, along with the context in which those buildings exist, such as hand-built stone walls from the 1870s, recently torn out, or the skyline surrounding these priceless assets. If this city council is serious about the stated objectives for historic preservation, I would urge you to demonstrate your commitment to the citizens. Show us that you mean what you say about preserving our rich history. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Young. Next up, uh, is it Carolyn Armstrong? Carolyn. Carl, let's see, you, see, you have this weird letter in the middle there that you wrote. Oh, it throws me off. Why don't you go on, come up here, and give your address and your name. Hi, my name is Carlin Armstrong, 6135 Carr Street. Um, and I'm here on behalf of the Arvada Sustainability Advisory Committee, along with several of my cohorts in the Sustainability Committee. Do you want them to say their names? Yeah, go for it. Stephanie Wells, do you need the address? Steve Nixon. <clears throat> Jeff Holman. I know you just saw us last month, but we had a really exciting event last month and we wanted to take a few moments to recognize it. The, the, excuse me, the Arvada Sustainability Advisory Committee would like to commend the Arvada City Council on its leadership in approving the recently held, extremely successful citywide recycling event earlier this month. We would also like to extend our thanks to Sustainability for hosting this event and for providing their helpful and comprehensive recycling services to Arvada and regional residents during the event and throughout the year. Last, but certainly not least, we would like to send a huge thank you to the Arvada City staff who, on short notice, gave up significant portions of their weekend to keep the event operating in light of unexpected demand. The event served approximately 3,000 households in the city and demonstrated a strong interest of Arvada citizens in taking advantage of recycling opportunities when those opportunities are convenient and well publicized. We believe that this is another indication of a strong community interest in expanded recycling initiatives, including working with the city's existing waste haulers to provide more uniform coverage of single stream curbside recycling within the city, along with enhanced local opportunities to collect hard to recycle items such as electronics, books, televisions, and mattresses. While the overwhelming interest from city residents proved to be a double-edged sword for this event, it certainly demonstrates a need and desire within the community for more recycling opportunities. As Arvada's Advisory Committee on Sustainability, we are continuously working to improve Arvada's sustainability in line with the Sustain Arvada Plan and the Comprehensive Plan. ASAC is currently working on recommendations for enhancing Arvada's solid waste management process, including increased education, exploring adjustments to the city's waste hauling practices, and expanding recycling and composting opportunities. This is not only the right thing to do, but it clearly meets a demonstrated need and desire of the community. We look forward to working with you on the coming months on these issues. Thank you very much, Carlin, and I, to I to L, sorry, my apologies for mispronouncing your name. Last time we were shoveling something, last time we were being a tool, but um, no, it was a great, it was a great event. It just, unfortunately, was uh, more than we expected. So again, thank you to the staff involved, and thank you for helping us with that, and we'll see what it brings to us next year, right? Yep. So again, thank you. Next up, Pat Osnes. If you don't mind, come up, give your name and your address, please. Hi, my name is Pat Osnes. I'm at 5745 Tabor Street. And I just came tonight to encourage you folks that when um, you have the opportunity that building projects in the, the city of Arvada have um, increased tremendously by value. And when builders violate uh, the statutes and ordinances that you have, uh, we're finding now that they are just building in the fines and that into the projects that are so large. And there's really no incentive for them to straighten up. And so I would encourage you when you have the opportunity to try to um, increase the fines, increase their um, uh, upfront money, and make it so there's actually some repercussions if they do uh, have some problems with the ordinances, as opposed to just blowing them off, coming down, paying a small fine, and going on. And they don't learn anything, and they don't, and they continue the same practices. So that's what I'd like to encourage you to do when you have that opportunity. Sure, Mr. Devin, you'll just take note of that and maybe follow up with them to get more detail around, around that. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, mm -hmm. Mr. Austin. Bob McGrath. 
Come on down. Name and address, please. Hi, my name is Bob McGrath. I'm at 11166 West 78th Drive. I'm coming here as both an individual citizen and as a member of the group, the Arvadans for Progressive Action, about 400 members strong. Uh, I had the opportunity to see a recent broadcast of your session here and was quite intrigued hearing Nancy Foy's proposal of strategic planning, utilizing a facilitation technique that I have used on my own at my job at Dish Network as in a marketing position using graphic facilitation. And I was quite intrigued by it and talked to David Jones, my council member at his town hall about it. And I talked a little bit about Nancy and she asked me to come speak a little bit to it. Um, <clears throat> when Dish Network was launching a new product back in 2016, we needed to know what the market wanted from us. We needed to know how a product would be accepted and so we took the graphic facilitator on the road with us to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. We had a big booth, a lot of people came, and people started to get energized and excited because they started to see their ideas appearing on the board. As more and more ideas came on the board, it created a mural, and you could see trends about what was interesting and insightful. And what you knew in marketing is you know what you know, you know what you don't know, but you don't know what you don't know. And what's interesting about that is as you go through strategic planning, you're trying to figure out what's the best direction in your case for the city. But as you look and utilize pictures and visual imagery as you are starting that process, you actually uncover two things. You uncover things you didn't know that you didn't know because you didn't even know to ask those questions. And you uncover an encouraging atmosphere of creativity where people all of a sudden want to get even more involved. Um, as a member of the Arvadans for Progressive Action, we are quite concerned that we would offer up our services as citizens for input into um, future plans for the city. And I wanted to at least reach out to you and tell you that although the bid that you received may have been a little bit high. I'm even now negotiating with other graphic facilitators for brainstorming sessions and for some internal discussions between two groups that are not necessarily able to get along with each other within our company. Who knew? And so we take some pre-assessment tools. We give people the opportunity to give us feedback, but they don't do it in that room. And then as we get into the room, the graphic facilitator puts up on the board what people have said without any assigning of blame, without any assigning of names, and yet people feel validated because their input is up there on the board. And so what I would encourage you to consider, reconsider Ms. Councilwoman Ford's uh, proposal for utilizing some visual technique as you look forward for the direction of the city and encourage the input of new voices. In this day and age, so many people would love to get involved in the political process and in providing citizen input. And they're sitting on their hands waiting to be called. So I would really encourage you to reconsider that proposal in that light. And I remain available for pick, uh, questions or even providing some of my sources, which may be a little bit more affordable and uh, able to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGrath. And I think uh, what we left that last conversation was as part of our budget discussion later this year. Next up, Julia Morrison, come on down. Just provide your name and address, please. Hi, I'm Julia Morrison, 7825 Barbara Ann Drive, Arvada, Colorado. Um, I, that recycling event, was great that it happened, um, but the fact that it was canceled halfway through, I think meant that it was actually a failure. And I don't think that was the fault of the sustainability committee and their planning. I think that's the fault of people that don't understand the public's desire for more recycling opportunities. Um, I think it just kind of showed us all that maybe the citizens of Arvada care about our planet 
and want to recycle and that we should give them that opportunity. Okay. Thank you, Julia. I think our city staff's going to probably do uh, an assessment because it was overwhelming and uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing a readout and same with our community will also. Thank you. So next up we have the consent agenda. Resolution 17047, a resolution authorizing a construction contract buy-in between the City of Arvada and Diamond Contracting Corporation in the amount of approximately 2,262,494 for 2017 water main replacement project number 17-WA01. Also resolution 17048, a resolution authorizing a construction contract buy-in between the City of Arvada and NORAA Concrete Construction Corp in the amount of approximately 1,007,483 for the amount, uh, or excuse me, for the 2017 miscellaneous concrete replacement project number 17 ST12. Also resolution 17-049, a resolution authorizing the first amendment to the 2017 operating and capital budget in the amount of approximately $1,924,008 and authorizing a faster safety grant agreement by and between the state of Colorado acting by and through the Department of Transportation and the city of Arvada and authorizing the expenditures of the city match share, if any, there under pertaining to the State Highway 121 Wadsworth Boulevard from uh, West 68th Avenue to West 74th Avenue improvement project Project number 14-ST-18, PRIN, CDOT project number C1211-082, comma, uh, comma 19499 in PRIN. And last, uh, resolution 14-050, resolution authorizing a third revision of the City of Arvada City Council Strategic Plan for 2014 to 2019. Looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Marriott. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that consent items number R17-047 through R17-050 be approved. Motions to approve the consent agenda. I'm going to pass through. Ms. Trallard? Ms. Trallard, you want to vote? And that passes 6-0 to zero with uh, Mr. Uh, Williams being excused this evening. Next up is a resolution... 17-051, a resolution approving 2017. Oh, we're skipping that. We're going to go ahead and actually postpone that item to June 5th, according to 2017. So resolution 17-051 has been taken off the agenda. So now we're going to go ahead and move into ordinances first reading. Mr. Jones is going to do that. Okay. I move that Council Bill 17-051, an ordinance vacating emergency access and ingress and egress easement on lot 5A, Arvada Energy Center, amendment number two, Lutec facility, 5305 Zeon Street, and, sorry, Council Bill 17-016, an ordinance approving a conditional use permit to allow for a daycare use, Little Seeds Academy at 5939, West 64th Avenue, and Council Bill 17-017, an ordinance rezoning certain land within the City of Arvada, Old Town Commons townhomes from City of Arvada RM, residential multifamily, to PUDR, planned unit development residential, 23.3 dwelling units per acre, and amending the official zoning maps of the City of Arvada, Colorado, 5417 and 5421 Allison Street, and Council Bill 17-018, an ordinance authorizing the Second Amendment and restated improvement intergovernmental, sorry, restated intergovernmental agreement between the City of Arvada and Westtown Metropolitan District, formerly known as Hometown Metropolitan District Number One, be approved on first reading, ordered published in full, and a public hearing set uh, for June 5th, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. These are first readings, so motions for approval of first reading. Cast your vote, please. That's passed six to zero with Mayor Williams being excused this evening. Next up, we have a motion, or actually we have an appointment to the Metro Wastewater Reclamation District Board. Um, do we need to talk about this in any way, Mr. Ray, or anything? Or should I just make the motion? Am I making the motion, or what are we doing here? 
Well, since we're putting your name all over it, I just thought you want to speak before we commit you? Okay. All right, so every year, is it every year? But we have to uh, actually appoint somebody to the Metro Wastewater Reclamation District Board, and uh, that's usually made by the mayor, but since I'm the mayor pro tem this evening, I will be making the motion that uh, I move that appoint Bill Ray to the Metro Water Wastewater Reclamation District Board for the period July 1, 2017 to June 30th, 2019. And I need somebody to ratify my motion. Uh, well, boy, you got a whole bunch of people clicking here. Uh, Mr. McGough? Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. I move to ratify the Mayor Pro Tem Pfeiffer's appointment of Bill Ray to the Metro Wastewater Reclamation District Board. Motions to ratify my motion. All have been passed. Are we ready? Do a drum roll. <laughs> Six to zero with the mayor being absent. Um, welcome, uh, Mr. Ray. All right, sorry, let me get back to the beginning of my agenda. So we're cruising right along. We have, next up is, we're gonna go ahead and open the first public hearing. Council Bill 17-013, an ordinance vacating a portion of the Candelas Parkway described as Tract M of the Candelas Commercial Filing Number 1 plat, generally located at the northeast corner of Candelas Parkway and Indiana Street. Um, Mr. Devin. Yes, Mr. Council, we have the Rita McConnell who will introduce this item. Thank you. Council members. This request is for the vacation of an access track no longer needed as the preliminary development plan for the King Supers development application relocated that access point. I have received the posting log and the affidavit of mailing and those are in order. Planning Commission voted five in favor of the request with one absent. Staff recommends approval of this request. The applicant, Brandon McCrary, is also in attendance for presentation or questions. Okay, for those that are going to testify for or against, would you raise your right hand? There's no one. No one's going to testify. Do I need to do it? Do I? Okay. <coughs> all right. So we're all done. No, no one's come up down here. Okay. No questions for the applicant? Okay. Now I'm going to close the public hearing and see if there's any questions from council. Okay, Ms. Ford? If there are no questions, I was going to make a motion. Mr. Jones, we're good. Okay, go ahead. You may. I move that CB 17-013, an ordinance vacating a portion of Candelas Parkway described as Tract M of the Candelas Commercial Filing Number 1 Plat, generally located at the northeast corner of Candelas Parkway and Indiana Street be approved on final reading numbered 4591 and ordered published by title only. This motion is based on the findings of fact adopted by Planning Commission. The motion is uh, to vacate that portion of Kendall's Parkway. All votes have been cast. That passes six to zero with Mayor Williams being excused tonight. Next up, we have Council Bill 17-014 an ordinance authorizing an acquisition, the acquisition of certain property along Ralston Road, generally between Yukon Street and U uh, Upham Street for the construction of street, sidewalk, utility, drainage, and or rel uh, related improvements as part of the Ralston Road reconstruction, project number 15, ST30. Mr. Devon. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, Pro Tem, members of the council, this, is, um, this action would allow us to um, uh, we would authorize the acquisition of certain property along Ralston Road. As you described, it's the acquisition of fee simple right of way and permanent and temporary easements necessary to facilitate the reconstruction of Ralston Road between Yukon, Yukon and Upham. It's proposed that uh, this would reconstruct the existing roadway pavement, widen traffic lanes, and construct um, eight foot uh, wide detached or 10 foot wide attached sidewalks and relocate utilities. Um, and uh, we have uh, staff from our public works department who just had a week proclaimed in their honor uh, earlier tonight. Uh, they'll, they're here to answer any questions you may have regarding this action. Anyone could be testifying for or against? Thank you. 
Do you tell the truth, all the truth, or the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I certainly do. Thank you, Ms. Young. Um, and there's no presentation, correct? None. No presentation. Okay. Then I will go ahead and go ahead and ask for uh, Nancy Young to come on up and say what you have to say. Good evening. I'm Nancy Young, 7706 Robinson Way, Arvada, Colorado. Young, Y-O-U-N-G, as in forever young. I am very concerned about these easements and the construction along Ralston Road. I've expressed this before. There are a number of historic structures um, along the way that involve these easements. I studied the plans as best I could, but they're written in surveyor's language. Township, range, section, quarter section, subquarter section, uh, based on the section township lines. So to be quite honest, it's not clear exactly which properties are being looked at. My concern is especially regarding the Loberg building, which many of us know as housing the eggshell restaurant. That building has already been close to compromised um, over the years in order to widen Ralston Road. In fact, there's a walkway that goes through the building itself, and there's a very, very narrow sidewalk, perhaps 18 inches wide, next to the road. Any attempt, anything that brings traffic closer to that building certainly will affect the building, affect its integrity, and its historic authenticity. And there are a number of other historic buildings. I always think of Mary Wadsworth's home built in 1894, the year after her husband's death, which was in April of 1893. It is an absolutely wonderful two-story building currently housing the Buchanan and Sperling Law Firm. Um, that building also, you take 10 feet off the front of the property and that will bring the roadway very, very close to the front door. There's a building that was uh, occupied by Jack Clark who built the Bearcat gas station around which the Loberg building is built. There's a lovely, I call it the wonderful blue house on the north side of Ralston Road which you take 10 feet off the front of that property and the roadway, the sidewalk, will be literally at the front steps of that house. And those are just a few examples. There's the Thomas Vanderhoof home. Thomas Vanderhoof has an elementary school named after him and he taught at Arvada High School for several decades. The drawings are not clear as to just how much of these important properties will be affected and how it will affect their historic integrity. I hope you all take that into consideration and that these buildings are preserved and maintained and not adversely affected by this project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Young. Anyone else? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing, uh, move it to council questions. Mr. Marriott? I have a question for Mr. Devon, just kind of a clarifying question. <clears throat> this particular action we're taking tonight is the, uh, uh, the fiscal part of, of allocating the money to do right-of-way acquisition, but this doesn't have anything to do with design or, you know, any, any of that. This is purely just to, to allow the, the project to move forward to begin by negotiating with the property owners, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, that's my only clarifying question. Thank you. Mr. Jones. I had the same question as John, or just clarifying question. Any other questions? Seeing none. Um, well, I guess when we get to the point, I mean, we'll see drawings by that time, like you said, it's all dealing with fiscal. So if I don't see any other questions, I'll look for a motion. Mr. Marriott. I move that Council Bill 17-014, an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain property along Ralston Road, generally between Yukon Street and Upham Street for the construction of street, sidewalk, utility, drainage, and or related improvements, 
as part of the Ralston Road Reconstruction Project number 15 ST30 be approved on final reading numbered 4592 and ordered published by title only. Motions authorizing the acquisition of certain property. Mr. Allard. Uh, I, have, <clears throat> I have a question. Uh, will, will what Ms. Young talking about, will any of those questions come back to the council before you finally agree or disagree with the property owner? Absolutely. In fact, uh, staff would uh, would be happy to meet with Ms. Young if they if she, if she would like us to to uh, further discuss the um, uh, the project and uh, uh, listen to her any concerns about the uh, uh, properties that she mentioned. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just you obviously have to have some design in mind, right. at least preliminary design before you know what easement to or what property to acquire. So. Uh, I, I share a little bit of that concern that, of course, if you if you take a person's whole property, you're going to have to compensate them for it anyway, so at any rate, I'm, I'm a little concerned if we can save some of those historic buildings mm. by negotiation or redesign, innovative design of some kind. That's all I have. Okay. okay. All votes have been cast. That passes six to zero with Mr. Williams being excused. Next up, I'm going to open resolution 17-052 and resolution approving the second amendment and restated service plan for West Town Metropolitan District, formerly known as Hometown Metropol uh, Metropolitan District number one. Mr. Daly. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor, members of council. This is, uh, uh, we're following uh, not only a local ordinance that we have on the books, but also a state statutory procedure that speaks to the amendment of a special district service plan. And so earlier tonight, uh, you'll recall that in the first reading ordinances, there was a uh, first reading ordinance for an intergovernmental agreement between West Town and, and the city. And what happens with these service plans is the enforcing mechanism basically is established through an uh, intergovernmental agreement. And so uh, we're gonna uh, ask the council to act on this tonight uh, first and then depending on how council acts, then we would go into a uh, public hearing uh, on the 5th of June dealing with the IGA. But as to this specific matter, uh, let me uh, bring you back to March of 2008. And you'll recall uh, the status of the economy about that particular point in time. Well, that was also the time that on March 17th, council approved a service plan for hometown metropolitan districts number one through four. Uh, on October 19, 2015, uh, the uh, City Council approved the amended and restated service plan for Hometown Metropolitan District. And uh, uh, the Hometown Metropolitan District then changed its name to West Town, which is what it currently is, West Town uh, Metropolitan District, by order of a Jefferson County District Court judge uh, recorded with the clerk and recorder on May 18, 2016. And so uh, tonight what's, what's being presented is a, a proposal uh, that uh, under the grounds of economic efficiency and in, uh, in the best interests of the residents and taxpayers of those living in the West Town uh, Metropolitan District, uh, they've uh, filed a proposed second amended and restated service plan. I've been working with uh, an attorney from the law firm of McGady Cisneros, um, McGady Becker, I apologize, um, named Elizabeth Cortese, and I understand that Ms. Cortese is present tonight, and she's brought some representatives along to explain to the City Council exactly what this amended and restated service plan does uh, with reference to this uh, special district. And uh, with that, and just uh, heads up to the uh, mayor, there's, this is not a quasi-judicial matter, so no reason to, to put anybody under oath tonight, but I would uh, ask, um, uh, Ms. Cortez to, to step uh, to the podium. She's presented a memorandum uh, in the packet that was dated April 19th of this year that is part of the packet that, that goes through some of the specifics. But I'll ask Ms. Cortez to go ahead and speak to the, uh, to the amendments and to utilize uh, whatever other representatives from the West Town Metropolitan District. She uh, wants to, to uh, not only make a presentation but also uh, to answer any questions that the council specifically has. Okay. 
Mayor Pro Tem and Council, my name is Elizabeth Cortese with the law firm of McGeady Becker. Address is 450 East 17th Avenue, Suite 400. That's Denver, Colorado, 80203. Mr. Daly gave a bit of background on these districts. Um, there were originally four districts. Um, district number two is a complete and separate entity. It's completely built out at this time and controlled by a resident board of directors. Uh, when we did the service plan amendment to hometown metropolitan district number one, which is now known as West Town, what we're here for this evening, we merged districts one, three, and four all together. So now one comprises all of the property that was in those three districts. Uh, the point for that was there was not a need for three separate districts, and so we just went ahead and consolidated those under the first amended and restated service plan. Since that time, the district um, has been very active in construction um, and are at the point um, in their process where they are looking at financing, bond financing, to reimburse the developer for those public improvements. Um, in going through that process, it was discovered that um, with current interest rates, um, they wanted to go ahead and do a bond issuance at this time, um, and there are better rates allowed by increasing the current debt mill levy cap, which is 40 mills for debt, um, to 50 mills. There is no request at this time um, to increase the debt limit that's imposed by the district for how much that debt can be. It is purely just an increase of 10 mills from that 40 mil debt cap to a 50 mil debt cap. Um, there are other districts in um, the city that have a similar 50 mil debt cap, so this is not um, definitely not the only one. Um, so that is, that is the basic um, request that is under the service plan amendment. The other uh, revisions that you see in the service plan and the red line are just to effectuate that 50 mil increase and change simple things from amended and restated service plan to second amended and restated service plan. Um, I do have here today um, Sam Sharp from the uh, from DA Davidson, who is the underwriter for the district and is working on the financing, as well as Carl Nelson, who is a representative from Century Communities, who is the developer. Um, if you would like, I could go through a brief status of what construction currently is and, and what's been completed out there as far as public improvements, um, or I can answer any questions that you may have. What's the pleasure of council? Do you want her to go over the improvements or? Do you have any questions? Uh, uh, Mr. McGough. Thank you. Um, yes, I have a question concerning the maximum debt mill levy. Just, just want to make sure, uh, perhaps you could restate so I'm understanding, so that this would provide for a maximum level of 50 mills, going up from 40 mills, but the debt does not increase the debt limit, the dollar amount the, the, that the dis district can issue does not increase. Okay, so the debt limit does not increase. Correct. But the assessment to the owners Correct. Would, would increase. Would increase. And so um, this district also does operations and maintenance um, within the community, so there's not an HOA for the townhome portion. Um, so there's also an operations and maintenance mill levy that's imposed. So um, that is not included in the 50 mil cap. That is can be imposed as needed for operations and maintenance, but the debt cap itself is capped at 50. Okay, so, so currently combined, it's 80 mills. Um, so with this increase, it would go to 90 mills total mill levy for the district. So there would be increased income to the district? Correct. Uh, for the operation expenses? Um, for the for the debt expenses with the 50 mills. Yes, okay. Yes. And I, I should also point out the service plan um, from origination, even before we did the first amendment, did allow for what we call a roll-off. So at the point at which the debt to assessed ratio of the district becomes 50% or less, that 50 mil cap rolls off and so, or 40 mil cap at the time, um, would roll off. And so the district would be able to impose what it needed to do a debt issuance. Um, it is anticipated that that would happen next year um, with the AV out there and, and the growth. Um, however, um, to take advantage of the interest rates at this time and, and what is known um, and the savings over the 50 mil in position at this time, the district is asking for it to be released basically now and allow this increase to 50 mils. And so the total um Mills and could be 90 instead of 80. 90 instead of 80. Okay. 
Thank you. Certainly. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so I had a, just similar questions along the lines of understanding it, but my question would be, don't metro districts at some point they progress to where they have a board of shareholders or board of directors that, that are all, you know, have interests within the district, is that correct? They do, the residents. Had, okay, and, and this one has not progressed or has progressed to that point yet? Um, it is, there are currently no residents on the board. Um, okay. They have sold their first lots so okay. people are there are residents out there that when could, interested could, could, could be could definitely could, could be, be on eventually. the board yes and, and so what's the board structure prior to that is it just that the developer has this has all the seats on the board of the metro district it's run by a five-member board of directors yes and they're all qualified by contract per okay. statute and they're all representatives okay. of the developer okay. at this point and 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 i would imagine the metro district board has weighed in on this subject or you're here at the behest I'm of, here on behalf of, of the district board of, yes, of the board correct. okay um, and and am I right I think you answered this for mr. McGough but the uh, not increasing the debt just increasing the available mills to pay the debt gives bondholders a little more assure uh, or bond buyers a little more assurance so it's a little bit lower rate is that really kind of the net effect that we're talking about here yes okay thank you certainly Mr. Jones, <clears throat> just to follow up on that just a little bit, um, how many, so you know, doing this today obviously makes sense because there's not any, there's not as many homeowners. If you were to, to do this when it was fully built out, I'm guessing there would be some objection from homeowners to. I, 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 we did send notice to every homeowner that's currently out there. There are about a little around 30, and we've got 30 and the three, one, three, or one, three, and four districts. Um, just it's one district now, but yes, okay, one, three, right. and four um, did get um, a very detailed letter um, drafted by us, as well as a public disclosure that we have recorded on the property and the notice of the public hearing. Um, we have meetings that are posted within the boundaries of the district. So, and this has been on the agendas for for quite some time. So, um, potentially, yes, with more people, there would be more people that would come. But um, it really is a um, analysis by the the district board that they want to take care of it now. What kind of questions did those 30 or so homeowners have? With we did not receive um, any questions or comments by phone or email from any of the residents, but we did provide um, my contact information. Um, should anybody have any questions and want to talk about it before today, as well as notice of this hearing. Right. Um, and then, so as it, as it states here, the purpose of it is to reimburse the developer. What are what is the developer being reimbursed for exactly? The public improvements within the district, um, so public roadways, um, water, storm, sewer, um, sanitation, all all of the public infrastructure. So horizontal infrastructure within the district boundaries. So the current forty mills is not sufficient to to do that, or what? There are. Um, significantly more costs than there um, is the ability to be reimbursed. So there's already a um, loss there to the developer in that, that division. The 50 mills um, gives a better interest rate on the balls, and, and, and Sam can explain this much better than I can, but a combined interest rate, there'll be a, sub, a senior issuance and a subordinate issuance. Um, and so the ability to have a 50 mil pledge, when we pledge 50 mils to the bonds, brings down that combined interest rate to a lower, it's about half a percent, I think, lower um, with 50 mils. And then just one last question. So when, when this was first created and the 40 mils was decided upon, what was the driving factor behind 40 mils then versus 50 mils now? I, I know, Mr. Daly, you mentioned the economy, but... Well, the, the, the driving factor is that's, that's what was permitted under the ordinance. That, that's basically, we came up in the ordinance with a proposed service plan, and then the district came in basically based on that service plan, and that includes the 40 mils. I think it's two or three times that the city has gone back. Now, when we, these refinancing opportunities have come up, where uh, it's become clear that the people that are paying would actually get a benefit. The people that are the citizens and, and, and paying these mills would actually gain a, a financial benefit by going a little bit higher for the reasons already described. Okay, so I do have one more question. So with that, um, and again, I I'm That's fine. just trying to educate myself here as well. So from the district's perspective, and maybe this is a question for anyone over here, um, 
it's my understanding that the district will will maintain the those public facilities roads the sewer whatever if how does that work so if let's just say the road needs to be redone resurfaced or a water main in that area breaks um, who pays for the repair or replacement of such items I'm going to defer to Elizabeth on that question um, the Sorry, Carl Nelson at 8390 Crescent Parkway, Greenwood Village, 80111. To clarify, there's there's two different parts as, as part of the mill levy. And I didn't, I'm sorry to step on you, Elizabeth. I felt I may be better at answering the question. Um, ultimately, excuse me, ultimately, uh, there are private roads and there are public roads. If you look at 58th and McIntyre out there, that would be the town of Arvada that would maintain. The developer, Century Communities, put improvements within both 58th and McIntyre, and there's drainage improvements and there's water and sanitary improvements throughout the subdivision that ultimately the city of Arvada will maintain. There are private roadways within the West Town subdivision or the West Town plat that ultimately the Metro District will maintain. So it's a little confusing between the, the two parts, but a large chunk of it the town of Arvada will put in and the developer put in on behalf of the town of Arvada and then there's private improvements that we are maintaining and there's mill levies for ownership and maintenance that will pay for that through time. So on the end, so if you look at the inside of your development, yes, sir. The, the infrastructure inside that development, if I'm hearing you correctly, is going to be maintained by the developer by the district? The inside of the development, save for some drainage facilities and some water and sewer facilities. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Jones. Thank you, Council. And Mayor. So, cor correction is not 58th and McIntyre, you mean 64th and McIntyre? 64th. Because that's like not in the city of Arvada. <laughs> and we are yeah. a city, not a town. So, I, I, I knew what you <laughs> meant. So, he gets correct. Town of Parker. Yeah. <laughs> Town of Aurora. Town of Denver. Yeah. <laughs> um, any other questions? Okay. Seeing none. Mr. McGough. Yes, I'm prepared to make a motion. You may proceed. I move that resolution 17-052. A resolution approving the second amended and restated service plan for West Town Metropolitan District, formerly known as Hometown Metropolitan District Number One, be approved. Motions for approval. And Mr. Marriott. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to make a comment. I'm going to be supporting this motion, and here's why. The Metro District is responsible for paying for uh, all the money, or all the money borrowed, or repaying all the money borrowed. This change in service plan allows them to do that with a lower interest rate, which is a benefit to all those people who, to the Metro District now and all those people who in the future will be in the Metro District. So um, for that reason, that's why I'm voting yes. That passes six to zero with the mayor being out. Thank you very much. Next up, we have council uh, committee reports. Mr. McGough. Thank you. Yes, I just wish to uh, brief the council on uh, an appointment that I have uh, accepted. As you're aware, I'm uh, the uh, city representative to the Jefferson County uh, Community Corrections Board. I've served as uh, chair of that board and now serve as vice chair of the board. At the recent state convention that I attended, uh, the Colorado Association of Community Corrections Board, I was uh, elected to an at-large um, board uh, membership on the board. And so over a period of time, I will be attending three or four meetings a year at the state level to look at uh, community corrections policies, training for community corrections board, uh, community outreach concerning uh, community corrections and education of uh, public ed education in the community concerning community corrections. So just wanted to make uh, the council aware that uh, I um, will 
be, in a sense, capitalizing on the criminal justice experience that I've had and will be uh, utilizing that with the uh, State Board for Community Corrections. A perfect fit for a great man. So thank you for your service. I need to go back. Uh, public comment. I forgot oh, to open that up. Don't laugh at me. Oh. Are you Mr. Hendricks? Yes, sir. So, yeah. Mr. Daly, he wasn't here when we did the first public hearing uh, when I asked if anyone, I don't think you were there when I asked, and um, he had a comment on the public hearing around the vacating of Kendall's Parkway. Because um, when I asked if anyone wanted to, no one rose their hands, and then I realized he just walked back in. Okay. So, is there anything we need to think of or do or any There's nothing we, there's, I mean, unless council wants to reconsider, you know, put that back on, and, and reconsider it um, so that you want to take his comment. You can certainly do that, but or could uh, we take uh, his comment in public in public hearing right now? Or public comment? Excuse me. Well, you can, but you've already acted yeah, on I it, know. right? So it's, we've already acted on it, Mr. Hendricks, um, when we when we had the public hearing. I don't know if you were in here or when I asked if anyone wanted to testify for or against uh, the matter. I'm not sure. Then he must have filled out the wrong form. Okay, so it, it's possible that maybe he's just going to speak to a general if matter. If you'd like to come up and just, let's just yeah. it's just the general matter. Yeah, it relates to a, a sidewalk on our 81st yeah. drive. Okay, come on down. Okay. I, I, I have the incorrect form, so that's what's caused a little confusion, but I think it's going to work out for you. So why don't you come I on down and... Uh, I haven't... Uh, I don't think I'm... Uh, what I'm talking about relates to... What's your... well, that works out well in your favor. So okay. um, why don't you go and give your name and your address and then go ahead. Well, uh, do you want me to start with, uh, your, with name my and, your name concern? and address and then go ahead and do your name and your address? And then... No, I'm Dave Hend David Hendricks. And your address and is? And my address is 8250 West 81st Drive. Thank you. Now you can go on in and tell us your concern. Um, uh, week last Tuesday, we had a door hanger on our door, and I picked it up Tuesday night and uh, put it aside. And I guess it was Thursday when I got to it. And uh, it's on a uh, uh, notice that there will be a concrete pour on 81st Drive on the sidewalks that are marked. So my wife said, you better see if we're marked. So I went out to see if we were, we were. And uh, so I looked at it and I didn't see anything wrong. And so then I uh, decided to walk down 81st Drive and uh, see what the other marks were. And uh, they all looked about the same. Uh, there were some gaps uh, like a quarter inch or eighth of an inch uh, between the uh, sections that were expansion and contraction joints, apparently. And uh, then there was a few uh, uh, stones that were seen on top of the surface that were probably related not to spalling, but to the original condition of the, after the curing of the concrete. Uh, I don't know what it was, maybe they didn't, they washed it off and, and the stones were, the aggregate was showing. Uh, so, I'm a civil engineer, I, I don't mean to say that I know more than the staff, but I know a little bit about concrete, and uh, so it occurred to me that uh, this job didn't need to be done. I walked uh, down to Pomona and back, and I took a few photographs, and I was wondering, uh, and so I called uh, uh, Kel Moe, who was, was in charge of the project, and left a voicemail, and then a couple of hours later on Friday morning, about 11 o'clock, uh, one of his staff, uh, who is a city inspector, Kel, came out and went over with me what the criteria was for a replacement of the concrete. And he, he indicated it was spalling, which I didn't see. I think he confused that with uh, exposure of the aggregate a little bit, which is where is okay. And um, then he said, well, there's water could get in. Well, I didn't see that. I said, well, if there's water can get in, can't you uh, uh, put a, uh, a grout in, a grout is a, or some kind of a sealer? 
Uh, he said, no, we don't do that. <laughs> and then I started thinking, well, are they, uh, uh, why aren't they thinking along lines of maintenance as opposed to replacement, you know, for a whole, <laughs> uh, uh, about 30 to 60 percent, I, I didn't count them, of the sections of concrete. So uh, it, it occurred to me that uh, uh, this job really didn't need to be done. <laughs> and so uh, some of the neighbors uh, who were not uh, conversant in uh, uh, knowing too much about concrete uh, wondered too, <laughs> why did it need to be done? And so uh, I followed through and sent an email to council member Ford and uh, told her my concerns, so she replied back. And so it seems to be escalated. And this morning I suggested that the project be stopped, but that was too late because if you, I, I knew that they probably had a contract with the uh, contractor and you don't stop things when you've got a contract. Uh, and so here's, uh, here's what I saw when I woke up this morning. I can. Uh, pass that around if you want it. Uh, uh, a huge truck on 81st Drive. And uh, the, uh, so it struck me that it was a major, uh, I wouldn't call it an industrial project, but a major project, major construction project. And so uh, I, th I drove from uh, our clubhouse, it's maybe uh, not quite a mile, three quarters of a mile, down to Pomona. And uh, uh, I know Mr. Allard's familiar because he represented our district. And um, uh, so there were quite a few sections that were marked for replacement. So it just seemed to me that uh, uh, it, was a, it was really a waste of money. <laughs> and I hate to say that about the city staff uh, who called on this, but uh, I do have a lot of comp have complete confidence in the city staff. I don't have any qualms about, but I just may think they probably had the wrong criteria about deciding on uh, whether this sidewalk ought to be replaced. And I wondered, well, is that the way they handle all of the all of the uh, sidewalks? Maybe it's based on a time schedule, uh, like you place all the light bulbs at once as opposed to one at a time, or something like that. Or is it uh, somebody walking? So I, I did suggest to uh, Mr. Moe that he walk the project. And that's when he sent out uh, Kevin. And Kevin, uh, who's a city inspector on his staff, uh, really just does, uh, uh, just does one thing. It looks for certain criteria, I think, on, on the sidewalk to see that it's satisfactorily done. But uh, I looked at it this morning after they started uh, uh, removing sections, and I didn't. The main thing you look for is the subgrade, whether it's compacted or not, and you look uh, uh, to see if it's uh, if it's uh, uh, if there's any voids in here, and you look at for spalling, and you look for water seepage and things like that, opportunities for water seepage, and this concrete slab looks after it's taken loose. And so, uh, at any rate, uh, uh, Tim Hollingsworth, who's head of engineering, is going to meet with me in the morning. I told him I was going to go ahead with the uh, uh, meeting with the council uh, tonight, just to uh, alert the council that maybe the uh, staff ought to be thinking outside the box a little bit, <laughs> maybe in terms of maintenance as opposed to re replacing a whole uh, slab that didn't need to be replaced. Because I've seen a lot of uh, concrete people that, that worked on various projects, and they, they are really artisans, the people that do this. And there's no reason, in my opinion, why they can't seal the whatever looks like it's a water leak problem or uh, uh, repair bro broken parts and, uh, and uh, uh, power wash it and, cl and clean it and, 
and uh, put a new piece of, uh, of a mass of concrete in where it needs it, as opposed to replacing the whole street. So that's, that's what I have to say. Well, thank you, Mr. Hendricks. Uh, Mr. Devon, I think you'll look into that. And Absolutely. And, and, uh, it's Tim Hoos uh, that is meeting oh. with Mr. Hendricks okay. tomorrow, and he'll be uh, uh, reviewing this matter and reporting back to us. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate the staff getting back, by the way, and I don't have any question about the staff at all. It's just some of the procedures. Well, thank and you very much. I appreciate uh, Council Member Ford following through on this. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hendricks, and we appreciate your time. And sorry I didn't even catch you early and caused a little confusion there. Just the paper you filled out was on the wrong hearing. So I'm glad we, we made it work out to hear you tonight. All right, now back to council report. Sorry as we digressed for a minute on that. Um, is there any from anyone else? I just want to add that Arbor Day, uh, Mr. McGough and I went to uh, planted 12 trees uh, down at Robert Farafino Park, and I think also uh, Mr. Marriott, you also did the groundbreaking at the tennis for Apex. So um, exciting things, things are progressing, and uh, boy, it's fun to see those kids uh, uh, help plant trees with our staff and it was been 31 years that we've been doing that uh, throughout the city and uh, learned a couple of factoids 30,000 trees this was number was it about 456 or something in there done through just Arbor Day celebration with Peck Elementary over the 31 years so that was a great event and uh, it's good to see Craig out there with the public so Mr. Marriott did you want to share anything you had at the tennis okay okay uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I, I do want to share, uh, last Friday was groundbreaking for the Apex uh, Tennis Center over at uh, 64th and Marshall. Uh, of course, it was a beautiful day last Friday for it, but uh, great excitement in the air. Um, people really appreciative of making improvements. Um, I've been around in Arvada long enough to remember when those courts were built brand new. My uh, mother was quite a tennis player when I was a young kid, so I spent many, many hours hanging out at those tennis courts. And uh, one of the good things about uh, Arvada is, um, you know, we, we have the ability to maintain uh, and replace and upgrade these uh, recreational facilities when the time comes. In this particular case, it's the Apex Parks and Rec District who is doing it. But it's a, it's a collaboration between Apex and the city. The land is city-owned land, and Apex uh, owns and manages a facility. But anyway, I thought it was just a great day. Uh, Great to see that facility uh, changing and improving um, and moving forward. And uh, congratulations to all the ci all the citizens of the Apex Park and Rec District and of Arvada on what's going to be one of uh, several new facilities in the next couple of years. Mr. Devin. Yes, Mr. Mayor, we're ten members of the council. Next uh, Monday, we will present. Uh, we will invite a presentation from the ARC, which is an organization that. Uh, works with people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Uh, we will have um, a presentation by staff on program and service impacts associated with the proposed federal budget. We'll have, give you an update on the Rocky Mountain Greenway project. Um, and we will also um, have a presentation update on the Jefferson Parkway. Mr. Daly, you good, Mr. Ford? Sure. Okay. All right. We stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>